Welcome to Social Studies at the Center. So today we're going to talk about some shapes. What are some shapes you can think of, Miss Ray? Let's see. Circle, square, hexagon. Those are some pretty good shapes. The ones I think about are normally pan handles and boot heels. Wow, those are some weird shapes I would have never thought of. But now that you bring it up, isn't this a boot heel? That is a boot heel. Oh, okay. And isn't this a pan handle? Exactly. Idaho is a really good example of a pan handle. Wow, that's so interesting. You know, as I'm looking at the states over here, they have some pretty weird shapes. Miss Morgan, do you know how states get their shapes? Well, a lot of people had to make a lot of decisions using a lot of different factors. And today, you guys are going to do the same thing. So here is a fake country that we created. And in this country, we have a river running through it. We have got a lake. That's that circle in the bottom. And we got a mountain range. And I want you guys to pause the camera once I explain it and take time to create your own states and separate the country. Today, we're asking a question, how do states get their shapes? The United States took a really long time getting its shape, and that involved a lot of different things like wars, land disputes, treaties, and even real estate deals. You know, the same thing happened with each state. Every state has a unique story for how it got its shape. Do you see anything curious when you look at the different shapes of the states? What kind of lines do you see? Is there anything different between the east and the west states? If you look closely at your state, what do you think you'll find at its border? So let's look at an interesting example, Idaho. Idaho's south border was decided by a treaty between Britain and Spain in 1790. That border is still there today. The northern border came from the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. That defined the border between the United States and Canada. What about that little squiggly line on the western border? Why isn't it straight like the two you just mentioned? Turns out, that's a river. The Snake River was decided to be the border of Oregon when it came, became a state, so that border was set for Idaho as well. How about the West? That border looks jagged. You know, it almost looks like Montana took a bite out of Idaho. Actually, that's sort of true. When the border was first decided between Montana and Idaho, they were trying to decide what would be best, and a man convinced the United States government to give more land to Montana so that the border was pushed over top of the Bitterroot Mountain. Wow, that's super interesting. You know, to answer our previous question, it sounds like there are a lot of stories and reasons that go behind a state getting their shape. Idaho gives us a few examples, like rivers and mountains. You know, maybe you've seen the lines on a map or a globe. These are lines of latitude and longitude, like the equator. And sometimes these lines, these lines, I mess up. <laughs> sometimes these lines can go into effect when we're deciding our borders. Sometimes, even a person making a decision can decide what a border of a country or state is. Now, let's look at one more state. Do you recognize it? It's Maine. What do you think and what factors contributed to Maine getting its shape? Go ahead, pick a state and explore it. All right, like we said beforehand, the states on the eastern side are a lot smaller and a lot more squigglier than the ones on the western side. And that's because they had to rely a lot on river transportation because using horses and walking would take way too long to get from one place to another. So as you can see right over here is along the state of Kentucky, its borders are very squiggly. And that is actually a river. And the reason why it is the border is because both Kentucky and Indiana and Illinois and Ohio need to have access to that river so they can transport goods and other things like that. So that's why it's squiggly and that's why the border is a river. And on the western side, they didn't need to use rivers because when these came to be, they were able to use railroads and railroads were able to get them from one place to another. And they were able to transport goods a lot faster than using rivers. And so they were able to make bigger states as well as the states are more, that's why they're more straight. 
Next, what we're gonna do is you guys are gonna learn more about this state and how it got its borders. Hi, I'm Mrs. Mertz. And I'm Miss Moyo. And today we're going to talk about the shape of Maryland. Do you know where Maryland is on the map? Hmm, it's on the eastern side of the United States, right there highlighted in red. You can see where Maryland is on the map. Let's see a close up of it. Wow, Maryland is uniquely shaped. Have you ever seen a shape of a state like that before, Mrs. Moyle? I haven't. It kind of looks a little bit different. It's a little thinner through here. We got two different pieces of land here. It looks pretty unique, I'd hmm. say. I wonder just how Maryland got its shape. Let's learn a little bit about it. Yeah, so we just want to talk a little bit about the borders of Maryland and how they got their borders. And so the first border we wanted to talk about is the northern border, the very top of Maryland. So back in colonial times, the state above Maryland, which is Pennsylvania, and a man named Lord Baltimore were discussing where the border of Maryland and Pennsylvania should be. And at the time, it was originally on the 40 north latitude line, which was 15 miles above where it is today. And Lord Baltimore, he suggested that the, that the border that, is, that it is now should be 15 miles south of, of where it originally was. And so Pennsylvania thought, that's a great idea. We should move it 15 miles south so they could have more land. But eventually, Lord Baltimore discovered that the map that he was looking at was actually wrong and that he had lost those 15 miles of land. And he tried getting that back, but Pennsylvania thought, you know, we enjoy this land, so we're not gonna give that back to you. So that's what stuck as the northern border of Maryland today. Wow, that is so interesting how Lord Baltimore made a mistake and it moved their border down. Yeah. Hmm, have you ever seen the right angle in Maryland and wondered why is it cut off like that? Let me show you. You see this line right here and it kind of makes that right angle. Why is that? Well, it turns out that there's a state here called Delaware and Delaware came 40 years after Maryland was established. And the Dutch people lived here and they were Protestants. And after England was able to get the Dutch out of this area, Protestant people were left there. And this now meant that Maryland could get that land. And Maryland is full of um, people who are of the Catholic religion and they wanted to take over this land. But the people who lived here who were Protestants didn't want Catholics to rule over them. So King Dr Charles had to jump in and decided that actually a different state was going to be able to take over Delaware. If you wanna know what that state is, it's Pennsylvania was able to rent out Delaware just to make sure that the Catholics in Maryland didn't rule over the Protestants in that area. And it was decided that Maryland's border would be right there where Delaware began. Awesome. Yeah, and so the next border we wanted to talk about is actually right down here, right below Maryland. And right here is actually called, what, what we like to call is a peninsula. And so during this time when they were discussing borders, Maryland wanted to take this peninsula, which is where the Protestants live. Just as Mrs. Mertz said, that Maryland was, was dominated by Catholics. And so that wasn't a good mix. Catholics wanted to rule over the Protestants, but the Protestants didn't want that. So Maryland went to King Charles I over in England and asked him if they could take this peninsula, which is in Virginia. And But King Charles thought that that probably wasn't a good idea and they shouldn't, that Maryland shouldn't run or be over the, the, this peninsula or the Protestants at this time. And so he said that the Protestants or this peninsula should stay with Virginia and that the border should be drawn right here, which is where this line is now. So right below there. Wow, another man-made border. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there are any borders in Maryland that weren't necessarily man-made. You know what? 
I think there's a river in Maryland that helped make a border. Let's take a look at it. This blue line is known as the Potomac River. And so when they were trying to figure out Maryland's kind of Western border, they knew exactly what they were gonna do. The Potomac River called for a very natural and easy border to make. So that's why Maryland is kind of weirdly shaped on this side. It's because the Potomac River makes that border. Yeah. And another border similar to that, also made by water, is the border right here. It's kind of a greenish, bluish line and right here. But this border right here was the Chesapeake Bay, which meaning that there's a body of water that runs right up here through Maryland. So it made it easy for the people to make this as a border because the water was the border. Same with this one right over here. This is the, a border that um, is right next to the Atlantic Ocean. So it made it easy for people to follow. This is another border that's made by water. So That is so interesting. Now I know a little bit more as to why Maryland is such a unique shape. Mm. Have you ever looked at a shape and wondered, huh, why is it shaped that way? Well, maybe you could go and try and find out how that state got its shape. Thanks for learning a little bit more about Maryland with us. States are really interesting. So here's our invitation for the week. Pick a state, explore it figure out how it got its boundaries, and then create a way to visualize how the state got its borders. Here are some of our examples.